Hey everybody, it's Jay William here again. I'm back. We're going to go ahead and look at coloring our base coat. Um, same drawing that we were working before. If you didn't catch me um, before, if you go back to uh, the first episode, that actually goes over the drawing. I'm going to head for this drawing. I'm going to do the same thing. I want to place you guys right in front of the drawing so you can see kind of what I'm working with. And uh, like I said, just like continuation from the first drawing but you can see kind of where we went uh, we started off with just like I said before with the um, head is a circle cylinder circle 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 cylinder cylinder circle you can't see it now because I've erased it but uh, circle 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 you know cylinder cylinder like that. So any um, legs, arms, stuff like that. You've got cylinders and circles. And then we've got um, uh, you've got the um, kind of torso also has a combination of all right there. Um, but we're going to start coloring and these are base coats that I'm going to do right now. The reason I call it a base coat is because these might not be the final colors. Um, basically started off uh, with these colors and then we get a chance to kind of see kind of how it turns out but I do know a couple things that I'm going to use and I've tried to set these out but give me a second to uh, kind of figure it out like I said before um, these colors some are going to be very close to kind of what we're working with uh, this right here I'm not really using a bone color I'm actually using a, a peach, if you would. I don't know why I like uh, I like the kind of peach color for bones because it gives a kind of yellowish, um, in a way, kind of yellowish color. And we'll smooth some of this out later. Uh, but you can see kind of what we're starting with. Well, we got the kind of peach there. We're also going to have a bone here, and I'm going to use I'm going to use a different color for the shield. These are our peach colors for there, and like I said, you just um, the base. These are base coats, and the reason I call it a base coat is because one thing I found is that um, once you put the base coat down, if you come in with another color. Um, you know, basically that base coat will um, kind of blend with it. And you can get like a, I'll usually start with the um, lighter color and come in with the darker color afterwards. Uh, for the shield though, what we're going to use, we're going to use a more of a tan color. Because this is still kind of a bone, but say for instance, uh, it's like a, more like a chitin from... Um, like some other type of animal that he's kind of pieced together here and no idea what he's working here and also if you notice with the even with the colors I'm not really going super hard right now because you can always come back and kind of change it up or improve the colors If you want to go super hard, you can, but I always, uh, you do some, you know, just to make sure you got a little bit of a shadow in there, but you also want to make sure that you leave yourself kind of leeway if you need to come back. But I do want a darker shade towards the top where the joint of the um, upper shield, so you can see how I make it darker here, and that gives it... Um, that kind of expression that you're going to see that it's a darker shade and this is a tan that I'm using for this um, just because I wanted kind of more of a different kind of rough bone kind of like piece there you need that with the shield and then this is more in the center of the world but we're going to do a different top color for the um, for the um, the fur. It's not going to be a actual traditional fur because I'm going to kind 
kind of do do things. He's basically wearing uh, kind of more of a two tone fur. Thinking almost like a uh, kind of like a leopard print, but um, it's not going to be a traditional like you would see here with like yellow and black. Um, but you could still do a leopard print without doing that. And in some ways, too, I use the white space of the of the paper, you know, because I could come back through and try and make it. Um, you know, with a white uh, kind of colored pencil and try and flesh that out. But I can also use that white space and just not put any color there. And it still kind of becomes its own color as well. Even though I didn't technically do anything to it. So I don't actually go and use, like right here, I could leave that just like that. I don't need to go back and kind of change that color. here and even though this is a base coat some of these are going to be final coat I'm not going to go back and change the color of these like even this stone we're going to probably use a gray with that because like I said this is still very like a rough environment it's not like a it's almost like a pre bronze age if you would on our world and then Go ahead and use the same leather like color over here for strapping on his things there. And those we're gonna go ahead and let's uh, grab something else here. Maybe what we'll do with the green. The green will go ahead and make some of this back around here. Kind of like not all the way up. I do like to leave kind of the tops of mountains and stuff to kind of like be more of a grayish color but we can put a little green patch up here it'll offset the uh color of you know your main character because you don't want to detract or blend in your main character with the background you want him to stand out from the background We're not going to do it all green, but we'll just have a blend in there of other, a couple of different things. Maybe it's like a, a moss that grew on the side of the, of the uh, hill there. Somebody at home doesn't like green. They're like, no, not green. <laughs> I always like green. It's one of my favorite colors, actually. I don't mind putting it in stuff. Okay, and let's go ahead and make it. Uh, one thing I think always comes out well. We're going to do this behind the uh, behind the the smoke and fog here we're gonna have it kind of like it's kind of like the dawn it's like coming so we're gonna add a little bit here we're not gonna go too dark with it because we're gonna fill that out with some other color and I used a red orange here it also kind of does make the um, the character stand out and I didn't go full. That's more of like a base that I use with the orange there coming in. And then I am going to soften it um, as I get up towards, because these are supposed to be clouds, the thick uh, kind of black clouds in the morning. But there's the dawn behind him. So I soften it up just by going a little light, lighter with the pencil behind it. It gives a little softer touch. And 
And these techniques that I'm doing, I mean, you might not even like fantasy art, but you can use this in, you know, pretty much anything. You you don't have to stay with the tone that I'm going with. And one thing about this, I know I'm doing Tried Scenario this month. I locked that into my schedule already that I'm going to um, kind of change up each month. So this month I'm doing my Tri Scenario or games that involve barbarians and stuff like that basically so the artwork is going to be artwork for barbarians and stuff like that we bring this in with this yellow because that gives a i think a really nice highlight especially if you want to draw attention to a drawing and that also can be kind of used with the uh the three the three sons kind of montage i used to kind of draw them just really just fast and cheesy and i've changed that over time but i still kind of stay with that to have the three kind of stars out there and they look very close but there's a mythology with the world that they're actually not as close as they appear and there's a reason why everything there's a reason but you when you create work Sometimes it's better to keep a secret and not tell everybody what that secret is. Because if you tell your secret, then people won't really want to look at the work. You know, so... I was trying to develop a secret with every project that I work on. And the reason is, is because it, uh, you know, it's got to have its own unique character. I make them all the same you know it's a, okay yeah you know yeah I heard it before barbarian you know crushing people's skulls but there always has to be something extra kind of to that in my mind and so that's if you're doing something if you're doing world creation and I know some this is about art but I do talk about the worlds I create as well because the pieces I do are never just for just to be doing them they're always going to appear in something a relevant project because why waste your time um, drawing something you don't intend to use? And what we're going to do here, we're going to do with uh, even though we've got um, some clouds coming, cover coming in, we're going to do a little bit of sky coming in here as well. And some of the clouds you don't even have to draw because you can come in with the light sky and kind of give that impression that a cloud sits there. It's just not as defined as the other clouds. And you can do this very lightly. You don't have to cover everything. Like I said, you can let the white space work for you as well. This is all before you even come close to doing your final inks. So, and some of these are just, I can even come in later after I do the final inks and touch up where I want to put things. Um, but that's also something. But right now what we're going to do is, because um, our, our guy is from the, um, kind of the middle part of this world. So he's going to have some darker skin tones but you can see I started with the dark but I can still come in with even a darker shade uh, for his actual body So even here, you can see I'm still using shadows, but the shadows now are going to be part of the drawing itself. That um, 
especially because we're just fleshing out his skin tone. And it sets our character as well. It sets him apart from the armor in the background. So, please, also, even if you don't have a question, if you think this is helping you with your artwork, uh, post in the comments and say, hey, hey, you know, this is something I've tried or, you know, I'd like to see this or I'd like to see that because, you know, I am willing to help people. I've had people before ask me questions like direct. And that's one of the things that inspired me to do a video series is that and people get to see kind of what I'm doing, where I'm doing it at and kind of how I'm working at it. And if you've got a project too, I mean, uh, as well, if you got uh, something you want to see a little bit different or something you'd like to kind of attempt and want to work on it with somebody, I mean, just let me know in the comments and then we'll see what we can work into the show here. You can see I'm doing the shadowing, even though I've got the shadowing that I'm doing. And this is a cur this right here, what I'm doing is a per uh, idea of what a base coat looks like. Because this is one color I used here. And because I've got a darker brown right now coming through, I can tone up the previous color I already put down. It's the same as right here. I could add a darker brown. And you can see that it, with the, it blends in. And actually kind of refines and defines the um, the furs. Even though it's not the same color, it still kind of gives that blending tone. You know, and that's what you want. You want things to blend. You don't want it to be where it's not got kind of a consistent color or theme. So you want it to blend. But usually you keep the darker areas out towards the sides, like I'm doing here. It's darker, you know, away from kind of the central point of the picture or center point. That's a funny thing about um, artwork is that, uh, you know, I can draw barbarians, shirtless barbarians all day, but when we get to uh, drawing females, we're going to have to cover up. <laughs> it's kind of funny, you know, everybody gets offended. Oh, you showed somebody's breast, but, you know, but then you can draw half-naked barbarians all day. Nobody says a thing. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't offend anybody, but. You can see how it blends in. Just to take a little bit there. I don't know if everybody can see still. Let me check the camera and make sure you can still see where I'm at. Okay, yeah, it's still in there, so. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and keep working at this. Like I said, I don't think I'm gonna finish this in 
one session this is kind of like a beginning of doing color so I try and go as fast as possible but coloring is one of the things that you got to take a little bit more time with you know pencil you can kind of push through even the initial inks you can push through but the pencil the final inks those ones you have to kind of like take a break and come back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish up some things finish it all because I do want you guys to get a chance to look at everything but you can see right there kind of what we're looking at and we'll continue this um, so you can see kind of how the warrior comes out and then uh, if you guys got any questions like I said post in the comments uh, don't forget to like and subscribe um, this is Jay William if you got any other questions things like that just you know let me know in the comments thank you guys appreciate your time out here